personal between me you and I'm gonna do you some serious harm you big stiff idiot the untouchable true school sports empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing hey what's going on it's your boy BT and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of true school sports subscribers now I wanted to make a video about a fighter because he really made a, a, a massive impression on me on the undercard of Tim Zhu versus Tony Harrison and that comes in uh, the form of none other than Sydney Australia's very own Paulo Acuso. Now, Paulo Acuso, this is a guy, Paulo Acuso, let, let, let me get his name right, man. Let me get his name right. If I'm, if I'm mispronouncing it, please correct me in the comments. But uh, Paulo Acuso, 4 0, 3 knockouts. He fought, you know, former world title challenger, Unies Gonzalez. Now, I'll be, I'll be fair and I'll be frank. You know, Unies Gonzalez trains down here in Miami, where I'm from. So I see him, I see him at the gyms from time to time. He's not what he used to be. Um, I think I think he's probably fought two fights longer than he should have. Uh, I, th I thought the, the Gilberto Ramirez fight probably should have been his last fight. But either way, uh, Acuso stepped up to this guy. Stepped up, he stepped up to the Unies Gonzalez in his fourth pro fight. Um, and he didn't look out of place. You know, he pretty much won. He pretty much washed him. He, he lost no more than a round or two. And, um, you know, I saw a fighter at, at, out of the southpaw stance who has very good footwork, who understands how to utilize the ring, but also at the same time can throw punches hard enough to to get your respect. He kind of reminded me a little bit um, of a less aggressive David Morrell. Like that, that, that that's kind of how I would classify him: a southpaw, um, a fighter who can be aggressive, but just you know maybe he isn't as aggressive as he probably could be because the opponent he had in front of him he didn't have to be as aggressive. But uh, Akuzo um, looked great. He looked he looked like a fighter that already in four fights could probably be a top twenty, top fifteen type contender. Um, and it looks like the fine folks at No Limit Boxing, you know, shout out to them. They're going to be fast tracking Paolo Acuso, uh, because if you look at the records of the guys he's fought, I mean, from one to four. So, uh, pro debut 11 and seven, second fight against Robert Burridge, 38 and one, 30 wins, eight losses, one, one draw. Uh, David Zagar, the fight before Unieski, 35, eight and one, uh, and then Unieski Gonzalez, you know, 20, 21 and five. So, uh, these are not records of fighter for, for, for opponents that you normally put in with a guy um, at a Kuzo state, uh, level of boxing, but he's got that uh, pedigree. He was a former Australian Olympian. Uh, he won up, believe it or not, in, in the Olympics when he fought, he actually wound up losing to the Uzbekistan fighter. What was his name? I think his name was like uh, Ruzmatev or something like that. Uh, yeah, Ruzmatev. I think I think the guy was Ruz. Uh, Dil Shod, right here. Dil Shod. There he is. I finally found it on the screen. Uh, Dil Shod Ruzmatev from Uzbekistan. He actually wound up winning the silver medal um, in uh, Akuza's weight class. But, like, he's a top fighter. You can tell he's a top fighter. And you look at, like, him. Just add him to the list of, of, of not just uh, all the Australian fighters that are coming up and doing well, but also uh, these light heavyweights. It, it feels like the light heavyweight division. I really do feel, guys, and this may be a video for another, another day, but... I really do feel like the light heavyweight division is is heading into a golden age. It's gonna be in great hands when Better BF and Bilbo aren't there because you look at the, the guys coming up. You got got you got fighters like Ben Whitaker, uh, Paulo uh, Paulo Acuso, Atif Olberton, Dan Aziz. You know some really good uh, fighters on the come up. You know um, Ali is Ma Ma Ali is Malia was another good fighter. You know there's some really good fighters that you know maybe people aren't paying attention to right now. But they had to pay attention to uh, later on, you know. So it's a, some real good fight, some real good fighters coming up to one seventy five. But uh, Alcozo is probably one of the better prospects I've seen come out of Australia in a while, like in a while. Um, and I don't know, I don't know what it is. Australia has this thing for producing southpaw fighters like um, Sky Nicholson, southpaw, uh, Alcozo, southpaw, and uh, Liam Parle, southpaw. Like a lot, a lot of their top fighters seem to be. Southpaw fighters. So I, I don't know what it is in the water there. Why the Aussies? A lot of the Aussie fighters that I've been seeing that are coming through the ranks at Southpaw. But uh, Akozo is, is 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 good, and I you know I've watched some interviews with him. He seems like he's got uh, a good personality and a and a and a, and a, and a, and a good level head on his shoulders. And you know, not for nothing. Let's talk about what well, let's talk about what might be potentially you know next for the guy because you know right now as it stands, if we go on box rec. Right now in the whole world, I mean, he might he might be getting a he might be in a big fight sooner than you think because if you just go on box rec, 
he's the number 28 light heavyweight in the world. So that's that's pretty impressive to, for, for your you know your four pro fights to be that high on box track. But if you just look at some of the guys ranked in and around him, so we'll go. I'll look at some of the guys who are maybe 10 in front of him and maybe 10 behind him. So if you just look down below him, so he's 28. Just below him, you got Steve Nelson, who was a big puncher, um, the part of the Crawford's camp. He, that you know that could be a fight. Uh, three spots down below him, you got Ahmed El Biali, who's a good friend of the channel. You know, um, you know he's he's fought Jean Pascal and 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 been in, and and mixed it up with the big uh, fight, big name fighters and been in camps. That would be a real good test for Paulo uh, Paulo Cuzo. You know, then if you just go if you go a little bit above him, all right, if you go a bit above him. Number 25, we got Richard Bolotniks, who's, you know, mixing up with guys like Craig Richards and, and Joshua Bawadze. 23, Andre Durrell. 22, Lyndon Arthur. So he's he's at that level now where, and it's crazy to say that because you really, as an American fight fan who maybe isn't up on his Australian boxing as much as, you know, so I probably I should be, you know. Um, I cover a lot of boxing, so it's kind of hard to talk to everybody, to, to, to follow everything at once, but... Um, you know, he's already at that stage where anybody he fights next is going to be a, a name. It's going to be a good opponent. It's going to be somebody that if you really follow the light heavyweight division, you're going you're, you're gonna to know their name. Um, so the guys like Lyndon Arthur, Andre Durrell, Balotnik, Steve Nelson, Ahmed El Biali. If you even go, if you even go just a little bit further higher, 21, uh, Ali Ismailov, uh, 19, Feng Long Meng, 17, Craig Richards. So He's at he's at that he's at that point you know he's at that point even believe it or not even a thirteen Alexander Vazdik the former WBO champion who just fought recently he had his comeback fight on a, a Marv Nation show if they really think he's that good you know maybe in a fight or two they, they can they can go step up to Alexander Vazdik and try to get a former champion and an Olympian on the resume that that would that would be something seeing Paulo Acuso fight him but um real good fighter. I would definitely say he's like the David Morrell, the a lesser aggressive David Morrell of Australia. Really good fighter. So, uh, yeah, that's my little review on pa uh, Paulo Acuso. He's in the True School Sports rotation now, so we'll definitely be talking about him as um, as time goes on. But, uh, yeah, let, let, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So, until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.